with new revenue streams, when, when we prove in a good business and government relationship, I'm an innovator. Um, I will continue to bring new opportunities to the city and we will build this city together. And let's, let's make a change. Let's, let's go to the tip of the spear. I said that last time. And I'm also going to say this. Riding on the tip of the spear, you get cut sometimes, guys. Okay, so as we walk down this road, I want to make sure that when there's a slip up, this isn't a massive problem. We stitch wounds and we heal together. So anytime there's a problem, we're going to discuss it in an open forum, like ladies and gentlemen, and we're always going to find a solution because there is never too big of a problem when we do things for the right reason. And this is the right reason. It's the right reason for everything. The science that we were given for 80 years was wrong. And at some point in time, wrongs are righted. And our city has a chance to do that. Beyond that is the appendix, which is I referenced earlier. I'd like for you to read through the other ordinances. If these big cities with huge law firms and all kinds of um, resources at their disposal are making this decision, I think we should also follow their suit. There's a reason why they're the largest cities in our state, and it's because they make smart decisions. So let's do the exact same thing. Uh, that concludes what I had to say on my end. I would love to take any questions, clarify anything that I discussed, and uh, bring the best medicine in the world to the city of Port Ritchie. Uh, again, the CBDs are legal. I, I didn't know cannabinol was scheduled in any way. Cannabidiol is kind of a tricky area, but you know, I know because we've had these communications one on one. The DEA considers it a Schedule One narcotic. However, it is not enforced anywhere. Um, so currently, you can buy CBD on Amazon. Actually, they just removed it. I take that back. But you, there's grocery stores and and drug stores that are now selling CBD right on the shelf, and. Uh, I do want to make one point. The CBD that I'm talking about making accessible to our residents is on a whole new level. And I don't want that to be scary for anybody because we're talking about non-psychotropic molecules. But what changes is the bioavailability of it. So we have it in vessels that deliver it into the intestines and increase the bioavailability by a a 10, 11 X magnitude over what a lot of traditional treatment applications are. So with that being said, you know, the response rate could potentially be greater as these clinical studies come to light. When, I, when we started talking this, I did some research. What I understand is CBDs, what I read was they were legal in all 50 states. Yeah, that's not correct. Um, you know, if I, I can tell you that they're being sold at a gas station here locally now, and there's a big sign out front, and it's simply because, unlike spice, where it's a very harmful substance, you know, cannabidiol or CBD has really no abuse liability, no psychotropic properties, so it just it doesn't have the same concerns. So it's 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 really a non-prosecutable. Molecule. I, mean, I, I, I don't know that a jury of your peers could ever convict you of distributing CBD, but at the same token, I'm an honorable businessman that's trying to operate within the confines of the law. I'm not trying to open a gas station and distribute CBD. I want to give this to people in a medical environment where you know, they can have their questions answered and where there's constant clinical studies being done to support the use of this medicine. Um, for the public. The CBDs have been studied in several universities. Garen told me that it was good for chronic pain, which I have 11 operations later. It actually works, and I bought it off Amazon last week. Sure. So know what? Yep. And you rub it in, and, uh, and, and there's a capsule as well. But now you're telling me that it is, they quit selling it? Uh, you know, I know at Amazon at one point had uh, taken a stance, uh, you know, they, it was all over Amazon and then um, they kind of delisted some of them and they might be back on there now, you know, but, and, and that's, that's really the point is that, you know, you can get these things now. So by the county taking a pass on this, you, you see how 
the opportunity exists. People are buying this if they want it now, and this should not be restricted. There's no reason to restrict this. And again, for the public, we have a lot of older people. I am one of them. Chronic pain, uh, it does seem to have a lot of studies that back uh, reversing diabetes and several other things which you've listed. So I wanted the public to understand we're not legalizing marijuana. This is a different, this is more of a medicine. <clears throat> and uh, I I'm, frankly can testify that it works for chronic pain. So that's the first thing. The CBDs are not psychotropic. And the second thing is uh, decriminalizing THC, which is marijuana. I don't know what, what are the, if a young man is caught with marijuana, what is the penalty in Florida? From where to where? Uh, you know, I, I'd, I'd really love to let the uh, chief take this. It'd be up to one year in jail, actually. Thousand dollar fine, I believe. Yeah, and what I, what I want to say is the ones of you who have kids or the, those of you who have grandkids, you can ruin, they, their lives can be ruined by that. I'm not uh, promoting marijuana, but decriminalizing it could make a difference in a lot of young lives. So those are the two issues. Um, well, let's counsel have many. Oh, what cities have been criminalized? Tampa, Miami, Orlando, uh, I believe West Palm Beach just did. Uh, I have a list in here for you. And it's right before the appendix. It's the page, page before, you know, uh, how this will make a difference for the city of Port Ritchie. So um, in August, Key West uh, unima unanimously passed it. Uh, last year, I'm assuming. Uh, Broward County, Miami, yeah, that was last year. Um, so we've got Broward, Palm Beach, Volusia, Tampa, Miami Dade, Miami Beach. You know, these are the cities that, uh, you know, I, I know it's a stretch to put the city of Richie in that context, but we have water, guys. I mean, so we have a beautiful city. Let's give people a reason to move here. challenge that you have. The city can make an ordinance to where inside our city limits that we will decriminalize it. If the person crosses over to Newport Ritchie, Hudson, and they have it, they'll be charged criminally. At, at any time, even though you decriminalize it, it's more of a policy, that statute is still there to be used. And even the ones that decriminalize, if for example, you were uh, stopped three times in a short period of time. They might not escalate it up to the fourth fine, they make it criminal again. And that's that's a little bit of the challenge. Okay, and I understood it, Chief. <clears throat> Federal law will always trump state law and, and state law will trump city law. So if, even if our police stops a kid or finds some marijuana, he can, even if we pass this, he can still, at his discretion, charge him with marijuana. That is true. He could. Um, but normally what you do is you make a policy and you try to, to uh, encourage that not to occur. So for the all of us that grew up as kids and the police took us home when we were drinking, uh, these kids today have great chance of, of having their lives ruined for silly things. And let's not just talk about kids, let's talk about the worker. So the guy, you, you know, you use CBD and it, it gave you a good response. I'm going to tell you that THC gives you a mental break, okay? And we had the President of the United States who said that this is safer than alcohol, okay? So at every level of government, except for the DEA, and, and not on the DEA's fault, it's, it's just, 
our government's somewhat dysfunctional at times, and we're moving along and we're getting there, right? But uh, you've, you've got the, the commander in chief of the government, which is who every one of you on here would answer to if he came in the room, you know, who has already went on record and said this. So let's think about, you know, the, the father who comes home from work and had a really terrible day. And instead of drinking 27 shots of tequila, he decided to smoke or, or to eat, you know, a cannabis edible. And should he go to prison for that or jail for a year? I mean, like this is just, and does he, not just that, now his job finds out and he loses his job. And it's just the repercussions and the ripple effect. And at the same token, we haven't taken the power away. I'm not trying to take the power away from the police at all. What I'm trying to do is create a collaborative environment where they have a decision. At the end of the day, even if this ordinance is in place, if somebody is a complete terrible person and uncooperative in life, they can still arrest them. So uh, it's just, it's giving officers a choice to choose something that's not a waste of resources. And uh, that's really what we have, is we have, if you ask people, even in this room openly at this point, you know, statistically speaking, you'd get somewhere between 30 to 50% of the people in this room right now that use cannabis at least once a year. So does that mean they should all go to jail for that? You know, at some point in time, you have to realize that this is part of society. When Elvis started rocking his hips, that was a big thing. Well, we're a little further than that now, so let's start to look at psychotropics and how they apply and how they can be used for mental health. And, and this gives us the format to explore both of those. And if this doesn't work and if it's a catastrophe for the city, repeal the ordinance. But let's move forward and let's, let's go to the tip of the spear. I mean, let's not wait to be the last person to do anything anymore. When we see a positive trend that's going to cause economic growth, let's invest in it. Let's get behind those business leaders, bring them into our community, and be supportive of them. Okay. Um, any other? Now, what is the face of this going to look like when you say you're going to bring business in? What is it going to look like? Let's put together a committee and let's, let's establish the guidelines of what it takes. In my, in my context, I'd love to see it as beautiful wellness centers that are very welcoming. You know, I, I think part of the beauty of using cannabis as a medicine is that you're not taking pills. And so when you wake up every day and you're dependent on pills, psychologically, you've already lost the war. And so when we have a, a way now to change the mentality of a patient and get them to walk into a wellness center and where, you know, it, we can change their diet and, and teach them about other stress reduction and bacteria in the gut and just have common sense discussions with people one-on-one, -on -one. it's a very friendly atmosphere. And what I'd like to do is I would love to be a part or even chair that committee to help set the, set the guidelines of what we want it to be. But let's set the standards and let's set the standards high. And let's set the standards high so people who want to be in this industry and want to be at the top of the field come here. Let's create a community where, the, where, where it causes a ripple effect. It causes investment. It's unprosecutable. <laughs> I mean, so I mean, it, the the real answer is Amazon would also be in violation because they sold or were the facilitator of an, a Schedule One narcotic. So I'm sure if Amazon's legal team passed it, you're probably all right. Okay. And, and that's where we're at, guys. Amazon's legal team passed it. So just put that in perspective. Well, there's six million hits when you put in CBD. I wasn't. Any more from council? Um, I guess I, I, I'd like to I just put you on the spot, Chief, but what concerns, if any, would you have about this in our town? Um, if I'm speaking on top of my head, I would say that if we're talking adults, I have very little concern with decriminalizing it at 20 grams. If we're talking juveniles, at some point we need to talk about a little bit more because with a juvenile, a fine isn't what I want. I want something to where if the kid is using this as a gateway 
that we get them into something that that they understand that they shouldn't be moving on to other drugs. Um, dispensaries, I'm not sure. You know, that's something we all have to talk because are we making our little city, you know, um, like Norway or something? Are we giving a free zone? I, I don't. That part I'm not sure I understand because you know, you buy it here and you drive out, and it's a very small city. You blink, you're out of it. You're committing a crime as soon as you drive out of it. And when you have marijuana, marijuana is one of those unique drugs that always is a tool in law enforcement because um, most of you know I did narcotics for years in Canada and you wouldn't believe how many people with kilos we would take down because they would be driving around smoking marijuana and once you smell it, it gives you the right to search a car. Um, so that wouldn't leave either. You know, you'd still have the right, even if it was legally bought here, to search people based on just that smell alone. So there's a lot that we need to talk about, but if we're talking adults giving them a fine, I tell you right now, I don't have a problem with that. There's, there's one thing I want to weigh in on that, though, just to clarify, because uh, the state of Florida has a, a low THC mar medical marijuana program. So if, if you, or a medical cannabis program, I, I despise the word marijuana, but um, if you, drive out of the city if you if we had a dispensary here first of all you'd be dispensing low thc essentially hemp which is what you bought and then when you left the city the pasco county could not arrest you for that at that point because you, you're in compliance with state law and and noco can't make low thc illegal in the county because it's legal at the state level local thc and low thc are legal low thc is legal at the state level right now Right. Low THC, less than 0.3%. I don't have any THC in the stuff you told me to buy. It's but you still have, a, in the DEA's eyes, a Schedule One narcotic. It's mind-blowing. It's mind-blowing and makes no logical sense, but we have an inefficient government at this point as far as rectifying the situation. It's hard to uh, control something you can go in your backyard. Any more from council? Uh, public, Ms. Foley, here in the police stay up and help. Yes, stay right here. I need you right there. Sanders Paul, the 8207 Old Post Road. I really believe this is a double-edged sword. On these facilities that you're going to give this out, are there medical doctors there? Are they going to give it out to sick people? The, the way that the Florida law is written is that it's, it's prescribed through a doctor. So, and, and please also understand that we're dispensing low THC. So there's no psychotropic. So if, if the doctor... Excuse me, honey. Low, high, I have nothing to do with that. I want to know if they come in with a script, you will sell it to them. If they don't have a script, are you going to sell it to them? N that's not the way the program works in the, in the state of Florida. So it's not a recreation. Yes, the, the answer is no, is the okay. answer. But yeah. they could buy it from the gas station right now. I'm not talking about the gas station. I realize station. that. I'm talking about our city. I'm talking about I want to make sure that the, this drug, quote, is going to be given by a doctor. And a prescription, just I go in for a prescription for my inhaler, okay? Now... You, you talk about this, that. Most of us, how many of you know what he's talking about? Tell the truth. And the rest of you, you don't count. <laughs> you don't count. Just knowledge. Okay, most of us don't even know what you're talking about. So bring it down to our level a little bit. Have it put in an ordinance that it has to go on prescription, not just an adult. Okay? And not that the children could go buy it without a script. So you're talking, you know, with a, a dual tongue here, as far as my ears are concerned. All right? So if this ordinance is going to go through, which that's up to the council, they're going to do it for the highest good of the city, <laughs> I want everything in black and white and every single word proper and all the periods and the question marks in it. Okay, so please don't get up here and say, we have a percentage of this and that and this and that. We don't know what you're talking about. Speaking a lower form of English for us. Now you're talking to somebody who's never tried pot, and I would never will. So I don't know what you're saying. 
most of us don't know. And, and in all fairness, right, I'm highly educated on this topic. So w when you go to your doctor, your doctor speaks to you in English that you can semi-understand. Okay. I can always understand what he says. Okay. Well, at some doctors communicate that way. And I'll sit down with you and grab a cup of coffee, and I will teach you everything in the world you want to know about CBD. And uh, not only will you like it, but you'll you probably wind up buying it on Amazon. No. Do you know? I'm going to take you up on that. Give me a hug. I mean, we're not leaving it like that. Anyone else public? Oh, I don't like this. Claudia Smith, 7335, Candlelight Court. I have two things. Why did Pasco County not not want to do this? Um, that's really a question for the county commissioners, but I have spoke to a couple of them. Um, Sheriff Noko is not yet on board with low THC, and I don't want to speak for Sheriff Noko and put him on the spot like that, but I believe that's what the holdup is, as well as they kind of wanted to see how it went in the rest of the state. This has been done around the country and around the world, and if we continue to wait, we are never going to have industry, and that's the opportunity here that I'm trying to educate the council on to seize is to actually seize an opportunity to bring new business and new innovation into a dying city one more question i would prefer if we would do anything like this that the citizens be able to vote and not just have city council make the decision because i think it involves and it affects all the citizens and i i just I don't know what they did with other cities, but that would be my reference. That's I it. I'm going just this comment. The, what he's talking about is not psychotropic. It's not what you're thinking about marijuana. It is not. We're not legalizing marijuana. We can't. We're just making kids, if they were to get caught, and I always say kids because I worry about their lives, they're not going to be a, a charged with a criminal offense. CBD is an absolutely benign molecule, speaking from the medical profession, and it has very good studies that help people like me with pain or, or someone with diabetes. So it's not a, we're going to go buy a drug. Uh, CBDs are not a drug, they're not psychotropic, and, uh, and elections cost a lot of money. Well, we could put it on the ballot in November. <coughs> I, so that's all I have. Yeah. My one comment to that would be, you have a window here that's closing to really create a new industry. And I'm not trying to put anybody's you know, feet to the fire. For me, I don't. It, it, this doesn't change my life. You know, I have opportunities globally. I, I'm trying to do something. We had a discussion that said, you know, and I had it with several of you that said, we need to generate new revenue for the city. And so I did a similar plan with some of my colleagues for the country of Jamaica. And this is the exact same thing. This is actually the same title of what we gave them, From Poverty to Prosperity. And it's, it's literally a way to create a new industry. And that's what we need. We have too much vacancy, not enough revenues, and a declining base in every single category that you could think of in this city. So let's reverse that. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah, Penn. That's the nickname. Yeah. One and Penn. Very easy. Hi, Angel. Hello. Um, yeah, Candlelight Court Lady again. Um, I just had a, a question or perhaps an idea. This would help. I'm sorry, I forgot her name. Sylvia or something? The one that was here before. Um, Sandy. Sandy, okay. So, um, in the idea of educating the public, okay, maybe, you know how the insurance companies offer the seminars and the workshops and when it's time for the Medicare and you sign up and you do this and because we've got to make decisions. And so I think the, a big aspect of this is educating people. Um, I myself, I buy hemp hearts. Um, I'm real. I'm really into studying things and anti-aging, and the power of hemp is magnificent. 
um, it's a tri-chain fatty acid, long-chain fatty acid. What's in the hemp itself is amazing. Cardiovascular, I mean your heart, your lungs, your brain, everything. Um, so something that's derived from hemp that has nothing to do with psychotropic properties, whether it's your lotion and you rub it on the inflammation. So I, you know, those are the questions that I have. Are we talking about an oil that's dispersed in, you know, with fluid and oxygen? Are you selling uh, accompanying equipment? Are you putting it in a lotion to be rubbed on? Is it in a food form? Um, and what medical characteristics are available? And the education on such things, because these are the important factors that have to do with, you know, basically, okay, how much of you have ever gone surfing before also? You know about catching the wave and missing the wave. Really big on this entrepreneurial thing. I was a stockbroker when I was 19. I had to tie my customers down and make them buy shares in Tootsie. Remember Tootsie? Dustin Hoffman, dressed like a chick. Nobody wanted to do it. They were all excited. I couldn't make the money. The other thing, the little tin cans, where you get the money back, you get a nickel. Those people are so loaded now, okay? So the idea, while it's foreign in its infancy, getting, getting out in the front of the line. As soon as there's a big line, walk away. So he's talking about getting in the front of the line, which I support, as long as we can understand it. It's not tarnishing our image. That's it. I agree. You know? Okay. Make it, make it pretty. Make it, make the money. Make it not make us look stupid with egg on our face doing something ugly and tacky. Agree. It's got to be uplifting and make money. Completely agree. Thank okay. you for your support. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone else from the government? Yes, sir. Want to scoot this along? I've got our financial people. Oh, Tom Mariani, five six zero two Bay Boulevard. Yes, sir. Now, wasn't this on the midterm um, ballot? It just needed 60%, but it, it didn't medical uh, the, medical marijuana. That was for the state law. State law. And, and yeah, that was for the state law. It didn't pass, and it's right. back on again in November. it was over November. 50%, right? It was 50%. 50, and it needed 60 to pass. Well, that was a midterm election. Now we have a general election coming up, and I presume that it will be on that ballot. It's, my point is that it's coming. So it is a small window. I think it's a great opportunity for the, for the low level THC. So thank, thank you. Thank you for thank your you. support. All right. Appreciate it. Anyone else public? Bring up. Oh. Hey. Oh boy. Hey. Yeah, hi. <laughs> <laughs> you look yeah. like a hippie. <laughs> Who looks like a hippie? <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, yeah, of course, uh, as most of you know, I've been praying for the city for years. One thing I found, and as those that believe don't make haste, they can be a window of opportunity, but still, oftentimes when you jump into something, make haste, I found that's not it. With our sheriff as a chaplain, as a pastor, and of course, I try, and this has not been received that well sometimes, I try to live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Well, the book of Revelation makes it very clear that the world system as we know it will all be deceived by drugs. That doesn't say whether it's mental or what, but it's drugs. My dad, at 59 years old, was dying. He had uh, congestive heart failure. He had uh, heart in the arteries. He couldn't lift his hands over his head. This is what he said. Before I die, I'll get as close to God as I can get. He wore out five New Testament Bible tapes he listened to Christian TV day and night, and in one year he was totally healed. He lived another, he was 59, he lived to be 81. What's been happening is there's a creator that wants us to come to him, which is what we want in Port Ritchie. And the more we reject the creator, the more we're going to look to the creation. Well, he created it, and there's good can come out of it. But all I'm saying is, is I have to stand with our sheriff to say, hey, almost everybody in jail over there is from drugs one way or the other. My grandson, his father bought him marijuana. Yeah, he smoked it. Why? Because it calmed his mind and he functioned. Well, now he's on all kinds of stuff. And I'll tell you, as, as I pray, and I'm just going to tell you what I'm telling you as a pastor and caring for the city, 
a little leaven, leaven at the whole lump. You're going to hear all the good stuff. You're going to hear all the right stuff. Why? Faith comes by hearing. So this man is here to build your faith, to make the decision that he wants you to make because he's a businessman, and that's all right. But it says that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So all I know is it ain't long after you take Jesus out, which is the healer, by stripes we're healed, to the next thing you're bringing drugs in, and that's the way the city is going. And I know it looks good and it sounds good, but I'll tell you as a pastor and someone that walks with God every day, it's not going to work. The blessing of the Lord maketh rich and addeth not sorrow to it, and you can't serve God in money. So the way out is to humble ourselves, seek God, and Lord bless you, but there's a better way than... Marijuana. Bless you. I just want to respond to that slightly. We've known each other for quite some time. He's a great man, and uh, we have a lot of respect for each other. So, um, you know, but to that extent, you know, one thing that I would like to clarify is, you know, I've seen children that are dying, sir. And those children have been giving a non psychotropic drug, and at the same token they've had synthetic cocaine shoved up their nose try to save them and it didn't work but you know what a non-psychotropic plant that was put on this earth by God does and so when I look at it and you know and the beauty of life is that there's always two sides to every story and the side that I live is real and what I mean by that is I'm with these parents and I'm with these mothers and I'm with the sick mother and the sick father and I'm not there holding their hand I'm there helping them improve their life. And, and so I, I think that's really the difference is that when you live in the real world with these people that have run out of options and you give them an opportunity to survive, well, they get a whole new life. And yes, your father, he found it that. But I'm going to tell you that these sick children that have Gervais syndrome and epilepsy and every drug in the world has been tried at them and it doesn't work, well, when CBD does, is that a miracle or is that a drug? Because it's a plant. Yeah, I'll address that. Okay. Um, so you're not going to let me dress him back? Uh, what would you like to see happen from this council? The best we could do would be have Joe look into the ordinances you gave, prepare a First reading ordinance and the public and, and uh, council can read that. Is that part of what you're? Yeah, I'd like to uh, see the, 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 you know, Joe, a wonderful attorney, start to put some magic to paper and get to something that makes sense for the city and something that can be repealed if, if it's a bad decision. Let's not put the city in a corner. Let's put the city in an opportunity. Oh, and I, and I agree. I can see poor Richie be the first instead of the last every time. Um, and the second part would be the CBDs. If they're legal, why, what do we need to do? Let's, let's set up a, an ordinance to allow a per permitting process to bring some revenues into the city via permitting. And then let's put a, a tax on if it's possible. I'll, I'll, I'll work with Joe in giving him some other ordinances that have been passed. I believe Oakland, California probably did the best job and um, if we followed a lot of what they implemented, it, it helped their city, and I think we can help our city with it as well. Um, so, uh, you know, I think we've got the, the blueprints already. Let's just start to build a new enterprise. Okay. Uh, I'll write it. Do I have a motion to have Joe make the first reading um, for decriminalization of, mental, of THC? I'm not prepared to do that until we have full counsel. Okay. We'll have to do this again. Okay. Uh, and you don't want to do any ordinances on CBD? Not this time. Okay. We will. Um, <coughs> you want to have it at the next council? Go back on the agenda. We'll be here in two weeks, Tuesday. I will not be, actually. I'll be traveling. Um, this is a limited, you know, you guys, you, some of you may or may not know, but I'm an exceptionally busy entrepreneur with global opportunities that I fly to service. 
So I'm giving this time to the city to try to get it going forward. What, what I think would make sense if I get you to just reconsider